I think I just ended my marriage. And it's true. I made my wife watch Young Frankenstein the other night. I know. I know. Listen, we got to the part where Igor grabs the brain. Remember, he steals the brain from the laboratory, and as he's walking out, there's a lightning strike, and he sees himself in the mirror. And he's like, ah! And, <laughs> and he drops the brain. I lost it on the couch. My wife walks out. And basically goes in the bedroom and slams the door. I said, you know what? I can't even blame her. I, let me tell you something. If I was the divorce judge, I'd be like, you made her watch Young Frankenstein? I was like, I'd be like, all right. And now he gets, uh, now he gets half your fucking money and half the house, half everything. As a matter, you know, she gets all of it. You're a moron again. Let me tell you something right now. I I, re, I used to watch Young Frankenstein as a kid. I watched it over and over and over again. For some reason, I'd only watch the, the movie three quarters of the way. <laughs> and then start it over again. I don't even think I've seen the last quarter. Of course I have. But I'm, you know what I mean? It's like, it's hazy. Because when Frankenstein launches the little girl off of the seesaw... That, that, and when he goes to the overly friendly monk, I don't know who that actor was, but they should give him an Oscar for that performance. Anyway, I don't know, guys. Then I'm working on my car the other day, and I, and I mean really working on the car. You understand? You know, there's guy, this guys will go out there and check the air, oh, you understand, or, or put, or fill the air conditioner, and they think they just worked on the car. Okay, I was welding in floor pans. And every time I would weld the floor pan, I would set the bottom of the car on fire. I welded a bead on this floor pan, and I'm like, huh, it was like the cartoons. I was like, what's cooking? And all of a sudden, I look underneath the car, and it looks like backdraft. And I'm not kidding you. The, all the undercoating on the on the uh, on the underside of the car caught, caught fire. <sighs> Guys, this this undercoating was applied before the EPA. I'm like, holy shit! I'm getting inst. I can feel tumors growing in my brain. I said, what is this shit? I'm under there. I'm like, <sighs> no no fire extinguisher. Like every show you ever watch, when you start to work on a car, the guy's like, have a have a fire extinguisher close by. I'm like, I don't think there's a, a, a fire extinguisher in this neighborhood. We just watched the house burn down. Uh, you don't believe it? I got the footage. Holy smoke, I can feel the heat. Holy shit, though. I was on the way back from a party. And I said, there's a plume of smoke in the air. Do you understand something right now? I haven't seen a house fire, I, I think, since the 80s. I don't, I, my, my, I am like an Indian chief. I see the plume. I said, there's a, there's a fire. I said, drive toward the smoke. Oh, my God. You see the smoke, you think it's close by. It was so fucking far away. Well, actually, it was right down the block, but we were far away. And uh -um. we come down the block. My wife's like, what are we doing? I'm like, trust me, trust me. You have no idea. We're like first responders, okay? But instead of like helping people out of the house, there was still people busting out of the house. I grabbed my camera phone. I put it on turbo. Do I got to tell you this right now? I'm filming now. Oh, yeah. You, do, you don't even know. I came out of there like uh, Francis Ford Coppola. 
I was like, all right, action, action. Oh, look at him. He's on fire. That's right. Can you run in circles a few times before you run out of the frame? That's right. I got to get your mother coming out of the house on a walker and the tennis balls on the bottom of a walker are blazing. This, this was, this fire was raging. I felt the heat on my, I had my, my arm hanging out of the car. I felt the heat of the fire. Flames, blazing, bursting flames. I said, park the goddamn car. We park the car down the road there and we start walking up and there's like little pops and whatnot. I'm like, this is the greatest thing ever. I'm seeing a house fire, real time. And I'm so into it. I'm number, number one, I'm filming. And what happens? A guy comes out and stands right in front of me. There's an endless room around us. We're first responders. And he walks right in front of me. And I'm filming. And fires up a cigarette like I'm not even there. I'm like, hey, asshole. I didn't say that. But I'm like, this guy's blocking my view. We're the only two people here, and he's blocking my view. I have this thing. I don't know what it is. It must be the way I carry myself. People love to stand in front of me. Like, out of nowhere, I'll have somebody standing in front of me. And then I got to, like, I got to I gotta switch positions. I'm like, I ain't having this. I turn around, and I'm like, now my back's to you, bitch. What's it going to be? What are you going to do? I mean, I'm getting the scoop. I'm sending the, the video footage to everybody in the family. All right? I'm like the town crier. And all of a sudden, I turn around. My son is crying. And my wife. Babe, let's go. He's crying. I'm like, what are we raising here? What the hell are we raising here? Get him a skirt and high heels for crying out loud. It's a house fire. What kind of kid doesn't want to see a house fire? Oh my God. Listen, we had a tradition in my neighborhood growing up. We had an island that was a bird preserve. Okay, and it was like, it was like a weekly ordeal. During the summertime, it was almost nightly. You set the fucking thing on fire. That's right. Somebody would set it on fire and you'd be like, oh, and then somebody would come around like Paul Revere. The island's on fire. The island's on fire. You're like, oh, shit. Oh, something's happening. Fuck. Thank God. Thank God that bird preserve is blazing right now. You go out there, you'd be like, whoa, it's really burning. Yeah. Yeah. Look at it go. Hmm. Wow. And then and then we'd have the Keystone Cops of fire, firemen come down. Oh, they were going down the road. They didn't know how to get to it. They couldn't get to it. They try shooting it from the, you know, from the street. It's a fucking island, buddy. The back of the island's burning. They, they'd have, you have no idea. It was like, da 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 We'll spray with the hose. Okay, you're fucking not even close. You got to get that boat down there from the, the uh, Statue of Liberty fireworks show. I remember watching the Statue of Liberty fireworks show on TV. W-O-R-W. Or was it W-W-O-R? Channel 9. I said, I am falling asleep. There's one thing that... that the television doesn't transmit well, or even your phone. You ever see somebody show you a, a fireworks display on their phone? It's like, uh, listen, I, I gotta go. I gotta take a diarrhea shit. I'll just see you later. It's like the most boringest thing you've ever seen. I've, I've recorded, I've sat there like a moron recording a fireworks display. And I remember watching it later and I'm like, this sucks. I couldn't even show it to anybody. Anyway, the car's on fire. I go under there. I'm trying to blow it out. 
I, I said, this is it. This is how a, this is how a car burns to the ground. You ever see a, a like a car burning to the ground? And there's a guy outside like scratching his head, like, I don't know how it happened. I, I don't know how, this is how it happens. Anyway, my son is crying. Now we got to airlift him out of there. Do you understand? I don't know. Maybe we got to call a psychiatrist now. Huh? Do we got to put him in classes for this trauma? Now all he wants to do is go back and see the house burnt down. I said, no, we could have we could have watched it real time. No, we're not going back. All right, I don't want to have to deal with another mental breakdown. So I gotta leave. I gotta leave a blazing fire. Now the whole neighborhood is here. It's like chicks are showing up. Do you understand? Chicks don't come out of the house anymore. So they're, they're all wearing underwearish kind of shorts. And they're all coming out. It was like a flock of camel toes coming down the block. It was like women in their real element. Like half shirts. I, it was like it was like it was like T and A. T and A. I would have came out of the burning house. I would have been like, ah, oh, shit, my house is burning down. And I would have looked down the block. I would have got a rod in my pants. I would have been like, what happened? What's cooking? It was like camel toes roasting on an open fire. Do I got to tell you right now? So now I got to go home. Right, we'll go home and then uh, you can bitch and moan about how I peed in front of the toilet again. How I peed on the floor. I gotta tell you, my, my wife's favorite thing to do. Babe, get over here right now. And I'm like, oh, what is it now? I go over there and she points. Did you pee on the floor? I'm like, no, of course not. Of course not. No, no, naturally, it's me that peed on the floor. But this time I took like a, de like a, a deep dehydration pee. And I couldn't even lie about it. It looked like, a, like somebody dumped maple syrup on the floor. I said, yeah, that's my pee. Clean it up. And then I start, I start wiping it with a paper towel. This is the most humiliating position to be in, in a man's life. I'm wiping my own dehydration piss off the floor in front of a toilet bowl. Uh, my nose is like two inches away from the toilet seat that everybody takes a shit on. And she's standing over me. Like, ready to tell me I missed the spot. Any, any the fuck way. Guys, what are you doing, huh? With your life. Come on. Go down to the beach, will you? Go down to field day. I gotta go to field day today. For my son. Yeah. I remember field day is like... Probably the reason why I never pursued any sort of athletics later on in life. I realized then. I got news for you right now. They made us do field day. I didn't know what the fuck was going on. I had the shorts pulled up to the moon. I had the shorts pulled up to the crack of my ass. You know, the shorts with the stripes on the sides and then the striped socks pulled up to the knees. You would have looked at me. You would have said, this kid has muscular dystrophy. Where's his wheelchair? Get them off the field right now. And then we do things like the three-legged race. Uh, do they do this anymore? They used to put a rubber band on a leg. This is like, this was like a, this is great. Let me tear my ACL for your amusement. Do you realize what that does? A three-legged race? It's, it's just like, I think a surgeon put this together, this idea for this. He's like, hey, we're having, we're having trouble here. Keeping the lights on, all right? Not enough torn ACLs in the town. So, uh, hey, look at this. What if you put a rubber band, these morons together, and then you make them run as fast as they can? Are you kidding me? Next thing you know, the waiting room is full. Yeah, class, we have a new, uh, a new event for field day. It's called the three-legged race. That's right. What's that? Why, why is there, uh, why does the nurse's office have a new stock of wheelchairs? I don't know. I don't know, guys, let's, it's field day, come on. That's right, I just remember like, we did the hurdles and I thought it was a high jump. I thought you had to jump as high as you could over the hurdles. This is how fucking dumb I was. 
And I remember jumping over the hurdles as high as I could. Like everybody else was gone in a flash. And I like jumped over my first hurdle and then I stopped and looked at my mother. Like, hey Ma, how was that? Before I went to the next high jump hurdle. And my mother was like, oh my God. She's like looking at me, like the parents are looking at, me, at her. She's like, why didn't I just coat hanger myself with this kid? And everybody's like, run, dummy, run. So it's like, oh, I'm supposed to run and jump. I, I remember knocking over every single hurdle, every single one. As a matter of fact, I tumbled over. You would run and tumble. If today they would be like, all right, stop the race, stop the race, somebody's gonna get hurt. I careened over my own hurdle and then went into the next lane and knocked over a hurdle. True story, true story. And I would really try too. We had like the, the, the remember the cross country race, which is basically just a race around the bases. Yeah, okay, cross country. And I remember I was running my fastest. And this is when I realized that there are humans that are superior to other humans. Yes. What, you're not allowed to say that? Well, this is what field day is all about. It's about showing athletic superiority. I wouldn't, that, if I had field, field days, that's not accurate. This is an athletic superiority day. That's right. And I remember, you know, listen, my best friend growing up was Todd. And, uh, you know, funny thing is, I don't think he knew that uh, uh, we were best friends. But, I, you know, he was like athletic. He's like good looking. Like had everything going for him. You understand? And we would do field day and cross country. He would be out in front of everybody. And when we would walk home from the school bus, he'd have so many badges, like number first place, blue ribbon titles. He looked like that, that fucking general outfit that Michael Jackson wears. I was like, what, what is this guy? Who is this? Uh, general Patton here? He was the patent of field day. And I remember I never used to place. I never even placed. I'd get honorable mention. That was my thing. It was the, 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 the I, I remember, I, I think the thing was, I don't even, it was like a clear. They didn't even put a color on the fucking, on the ribbon. I think they just gave me like a piece of saran wrap. Here, hang this, here, dummy. Hang that on your arm. I tell you what. Oh, that would make me do the, the, the wheelbarrow race with Jason Roberts. Jason Roberts was, Roberts was like a young LeBron James. And I didn't even have the upper body strength to hold myself up. So it was like he was, when he was, he was pushing me, it was like he was plowing a field. the hell with this shit so well, like, like I said when you really work on a car you come inside you have dirt everywhere like in your ears up your nose in the in the crevices of your ankles I have uh, in in the the butt of my varicose veins So I go, I said, let me take a shower before I pick up Tani. So I take a shower or whatnot. I miss like one piece of dirt on my neck. And my wife comes up to me. She goes, look, pig. I'm like, this is, this is you're verbally abusing me. You got, you got to love Spanish women. I, I like that. There's no, there's like, they're like verbally abusive. Go take another shower. I'm like, I'm not taking another shower. And then she goes and wipes my neck and like wipes the skin off my neck. I'm like, take it easy. I got sensitive skin. I'm white. I'm sorry I, I wasn't born with this hazel skin. You know, this golden brown skin. I have white skin. If you breathe on it the wrong way, I break out into hives. You have no idea. What is with this body? Give me a rest for God's sake. 
There you go. Hamish a field day, whatever. I'll go down there. I'm watching a documentary. Listen, get it, get out of here right now. Do you want to do something like useful with your life? There's a documentary. I'll leave a link in the description. And but I won't because I always forget to. About guys in from 1969 in Williamsburg, Virginia. Remember Williamsburg, Virginia? You go down there like everybody was dressed like pilgrims. Uh, I would love to go there and just be the town drunk. Come on, there was a town drunk. What is it? The guy that holds the lantern? The night watchman, right? Hey, how's everybody doing? I'm the night watchman. Do you want to join me on a patrol? Like, yeah, okay, we'll go. You go, well, over here we got, uh, this is, uh, Jenny's house. Her name's not Jenny. They call her, they call her by a pilgrim name. I don't know what it is. But what a fucking, you gotta see, you gotta see the, hey! You gotta see the, the cunt on her. I remember, I remember one time, like, hanging out with these guys. These older guys. And this one kid was like, you had to see the cunt on her. And I said, oh my God, who talks like that? Who even talks like that? To this day, I don't even think I've, t I've heard anybody's talk that vile. You got to see the cunt on her? I was like, this boy, oh boy. I was like, these older kids. I was like, is this what it's like when you get older? So I would have never said that. I would have never even thought to look. Yet. Anyhow. Yeah, he goes, sometimes I, I catch her but by candlelight. She's going upstairs to take a shit. I hang out on the roof over here. The roof of the general store. And I watch her take a dump. Oh, yeah. Anyhow. Yeah, come over here. This is the... Uh, this is the, the town square here. That's right. It's owned by Elon Musk. You didn't know? Come on. Uh, there's the hoops where you would get in and people would they'd lock in the hoops and then everybody in town would walk by and ridicule you. <laughs> Take me back to the paradise city, baby. Imagine, imagine you're walking to work like you're having a bad day. Like, ah, gotta go fucking chop wood for old man McGregor, whatever his name was. This is not McGregor. Have to be like uh, at that time's name. Anyhow, you walk by, there's the guy in the hoop. You're like, like you know how pissed you are in the morning when you go to work? You're like, ah, you fucked up, huh? Pooh! <clears throat> Look at you. Give me a fucking rock. Whooping! Right off his forehead. Take that, you scumbag. That's right, what? Huh? Look at you. You're an embarrassment. Everybody, look at this moron. They're like, yeah, <laughs> fucking jerk off. That's right. Get your act together. You disgust me, disgraziato. And you walk by and you're like, wow, this is a good morning. You know, maybe you kick a little dirt in his face. You're like, yeah, take that. And you fuck the guy's coughing. He's like, <coughs> please, please, <coughs> shut up. Shut your trap. This is what human beings are all about. Don't you understand? Ridicule. Where do we get this facade of friendly? That's what I want to know. When like when you see your neighbors, hi neighbor. Yeah, when are you gonna take down the fucking Christmas lights, huh, buddy? If everybody said what they actually would say, everybody would be dead or either locked in jail. What were we talking about? Right, listen, guys, Callahan here.
Rita falls. Scanner on, turn it off, turn it back on again, nobody sees. And just like that, we're scanning for crimes. <sighs> yeah, so me and my wife were home the other day. My son's out at school, so I'm like, let's go for a ride in the car. What car? I said, my car. The Marconish. She's like, oh no, I don't, I don't want to drive in that thing. I said, come on. It was like a beautiful day out, you know? It's like, come on, take a ride. You never took a ride. I really think I'm going to knock her socks off. Like, I really think she was going to enjoy the car. She's just like, <sighs> so I bring her out. I throw her in the fucking car. I start her up. Bazoing. She, I mean, it starts right up. I'm looking at my wife like, huh, huh? Running like a fucking top. She's a cream puff. You didn't know? Look at this. She purrs like a kitten, man. So she's just like rolling her eyes. Like, anyway. Complaining about everything in the car. Why is this? The, the, why is there no floor? Why am I staring at the road inside of a car? Say, what? Wait. wait hey, just, just relax. Enjoy the ride. Take off down the block. Let me tell you something. I hit Strong's Avenue. I start rolling through the gears. I mean, come on, baby. It's a party. It's a party. We pull up to our first light. What happens? Guy pulls off to us. Oh, what a car. What is that? Comet? I always get this. Is it a comet? I'm like, no, it's a Mercury meteor. Guy. Oh, he goes, nice. And always, well, not once I get start start talking to somebody, they're like, "Why is the front so high up in the air?" I'm like, well, <laughs> because it's a gasser. That's right. They used to put a truck axle underneath there to move the center of gravity to the back of the car. So when you step on the gas, it get traction to the rear tires. It's all drag racing trick. And, and by that time, the person's eyes, like sitting there, their eyes are glazing over, and they're like, uh, yeah, listen, uh, I'll be back. I got to go take an acid dump. And I'm like, all right, hey, listen, that's it. I just, when somebody asks you about the call, you just go, um, from now on, I'm just going to go like this. I, I don't know. I don't know. What, is there an engine in it? Well, we're on the highway, and I'm next to you at a light. Anyhow. So as, as luck would have it, like, at every light I stop at, somebody's asking about the car, or I'm getting like a thumbs up from the guy on the side of the road. Something like, that's when my, ch my chest comes out like a pride rooster. I'm like, that's right, buddies. Only gas are in town with four doors. I know you're throwing up already. Anyhow, so I'm like, boy, oh boy, this is great. I said the wife's seeing like she's driving around to something special. And I said, oh, I, so I lean into. Her. I said, hey, car gets a lot of attention, doesn't it? Now women love attention. Let's face it, they love attention. She goes, bang. The only people that like your car are Bill Hellies. <laughs> I swear to God, she said Bill Hellies. Number one, I lost it inside. And number two, she was right. I started to analyze, like go through the whole Rolodex of people that just gave me a compliment on the car. They're all the most horrendous people on planet Earth. I said, what are you going to do? I said, then, then as my, as my coup de gras, okay, I dropped the, I dropped the Mercanish in first gear, I hit the line lock, and I start doing a burnout, leaving a light, and then I get off, and it's, and it's one, two, three, pulling through the gears, full speed, what are you going to do? Then I let off, and the engine starts popping through the exhaust, because the exhaust pipes are so short, relatively short. For the RPM that we that I, that I let off at, hey, they're driving too fast. I said, yeah, that's the fucking point. 
Oh, go Grease Lightning, go Grease Lightning. Oh yeah, I mean we're gonna get a PJ in a motherfucking front seat tonight. Go Grease Lightning, I mean come on. We're on the bench seat, I, I pull my arm around her, I pull her in close. Come on. She couldn't admit she enjoyed the ride. She pretended like she was so happy when we got home. It's pretty, uh, pretty genuine though, the happiness, I have to admit. Guys, what are we doing here? I, I don't know. Listen, you wanna do something quality with your life? This video in Gettysburg in 1969 of a guy building muskets, building a musket. You've never seen a process like this in your life. He was a young guy too, good looking. And this is the way documentaries are done. It was like no nonsense. I said, always wondered how they made it a gun barrel and how they, they, they hammer out the iron, you know, like flat, tapered, long piece of iron, and they hit it in swages and bend it around. And then the seam is hammer welded. And you have to understand something, when you heat metal to the point of hammer welding, it's like, it's like there's a very, very small zone where it's like white hot and you strike it and white sparks come off. And there's a sizzle sound. Of the, there's a sound and there's a feel and there's a noise when you're welding. The guy knows it. And then quick, it's got to go back into the forge and heat it up white hot for more welding. And you say, by Christ, he forms this barrel with a hammer. And then they forge, and then they, they, they file it into an octagon shape. And it's perfect. And he looks down the the barrel of the gun like this and he hammers it to get it perfectly straight. There's no jigs, there's no machines. And the level of precision that they work with is like incredible. And you know that every caliber of a musket was different. It was according to how many lead balls you could make per pound. Like you, you, what would happen is the gunsmith that built you a gun, he would also build you uh, the, the, uh, the lead shot ball maker because it was designed to fit your barrel. So you'd make your own lead shot. And then your cal the caliber of your gun was measured by how many lead balls you could make with a pound, like how many, how many lead balls you could make with a pound of lead. Was it a pound of lead? Yes, a pound of lead. How many lead balls would go would fit in your gun? Or, or you could make with a pound of lead. With that size. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Anyhow. And then they would cast the other components and make the springs with spring steel. There was all sorts of tempering and different, and a plug they had to tap and drill. They had to bore, bore and rifle. They, they normally they didn't rifle. It was smooth bore uh, weapons way back when. But he went through the rifling process with drill bits. He had, they used drill bits that they made themselves, and then honing bits would get the the, the barrel absolutely smooth. These guns were accurate to three, uh, three, 300 yards with rifling, with rifling. And we're talking about, you're getting hit with like a, a shotgun slug, basically, from a musket. The guy, the, the guy said like a shot, a, a 300 yard shot from a musket's gonna ruin your day. Oh my God, right in the knees, oh my God. Civil War. You want to know why so many of these cocksuckers? I don't know what, what, what are they shooting during the Civil War. I guess Revolutionary War, right? How come in the Civil War there were so many cripples after the war? And in the in the Revolutionary War, you don't see any paintings of that. I guess they were like, ah, the, the artist was like, I ain't gonna waste my time on this. Uh, this what they call them back then, limps, lames. I'm not gonna waste my time on this lame. 
If you've got a lame leg, we'll paint something else. Where's the fucking mead? Give me some beer. Alcohol, please. I know everybody was drinking. Stop lying. Anyhow, they craft this, and then they make the stock, and just bedding, just bedding the barrel into the stock. Oh, my God. And the wood that they would choose, and how it was cut. It was absolutely wood. It was an hour long. It was the most fantastic documentary I think I've ever seen. And, and you say to yourself, this is a kid that could be at Woodstock right now. Getting free sex, wasn't it? This summer of free love? And you're in here making muskets? I wish I could go in there. I would have hit him with that goddamn Captain Crunch hat. Moron! You see they're having sex in the streets out there? You're taking nine years to build a fucking musket? Wearing this fucking tunic? Who are you? You look like you're dressed for a role-playing game, for crying out loud. Before you get the, the, the ring mail. Get out of this shithole. Go do some LSD. They're banging chicks two at a time out there. Jimi Hendrix is playing Woodstock. You're in here making a fucking gun stock. What are you, a moron again? I've had it a fucking enough. And then you had an apprentice. And I said, you're not even the guy really making the gun. You're just a moron that hands him all the tools. Go smoke a joint somewhere. God almighty, don't you know Jimi Hendrix dies next year? You're sitting here wiping your ass with corn cobs? I'd, I'd work at Gettysburg. I'm telling you right now. I'll put on the Hamisher clothes. The only the problem is I'm useless. I don't have any, like, talent. Churn butter? I don't know. Well, I want to do... You know what? That's why guys never really did good porno. I want to do the Williamsburg... Like, if Williamsburg had a porno studio. You kidding me? It'd be like... All right, let's get started with a Hans Blowy. That's right, and only missionary position because we are good Christians. I mean, what's going on, ladies and gentlemen? That's right. The guy, she walks in. She, she's like, got a best, uh, I don't know, bustier on, brazier. She comes in, she's like, this guy looks like the guy from Quaker Oats. And he's, and the guy's like, that's right, Pilgrim, start sucking. Are you kidding me? Oh, my God. I'd start a porno studio with all my whaling money. I'd be like, oh, my God. Here we go. Uh, all right, guys. Listen, do you want to do something with your life? Let's do something, can we? I don't know, guys. Who's in, who's in, this is the magic of this programming. Do you understand? We have the entire video game universe at our fingertips. The one that counts. So I say it's Neo Geo time. Picture, picture time. Screen is horrendous. Ah. Oh my God! What a difference! Jeez, I don't know if you, the viewers at home, can appreciate that. Uh, uh, all I need is a controller. Tap into the Edison line. Pipe through the Sansui 1010. Charging atomic batteries. Kill the lights of attrition. And move you into prime time position. Do you realize that this reeks of entitlement? That we can just go to the Neo Geo, you know, at like any time we want. Oh, would you knock it off? 
Oh yeah. Okay, guys, we do it like this. It's a Neo Geo lightning round. Do I gotta tell you? Where are you, baby? Oh, 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 oh. And here we go. It's just like this. It's da, da, da. I don't know what we're gonna get. Even though it looked like uh, Fatal Fury. I get a boner every time. Here we go, put the credits in there. Oh my God, guys, come on. Oh my God, look at those pectorials. Oh, Jesus Christ, look at the anterior deltoids. Oh, I'm in, baby, put in those credits. Who could afford this back in the day? Ah, uh, all right, we're gonna be Terry Bogart, right? Who are we fight? I don't, I don't care. This guy. Let's, let's beat the fuck out of this guy and then hit the road. Oh, shit. Wow. This is awesome. Ah. Uh -huh. Where are we? Oh, right in your fucking face. Shit. Oh, Jesus. Oh, hit him on the way back. Out of here, bitch. You're fucking with the wrong guy, pal. Oh, boy. Out of here, bitch. Oh, I'll give him one more. Ready? Up and down. Oh, shit. Fuck you. Oh, yes. Oh, boy. What a killer game. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Oh shit. That, that. <sighs> that got the adrenaline going. Ah, <laughs> that was fun. Man, oh man, only the Neo Geo can turn it on like that, huh? Woo. What do we got here? Guys, it's a lightning round, okay? I have no control. Oh, your beautiful family. Oh! <laughs> oh wait, we've already played this. Art of fighting, we already played it. We already played it. Ah, what the hell, one round. Who are we gonna be? Oh, I can, I can only select these guys? Ryu, I love it. Tell me where my sister is. All right, this guy's got my sister. Come on. Come here, come here. Kick you in the face, you asshole. Listen, I think we played this one before. So, you know, it, it, here we go. 
Bap, bap. Don't know. Just don't know. Oh shit. 1998. What is this? Coins, 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 coins. Blazing Star. Guys, are we here to go on all cylinders today or what? Oh. Do we have a play blade? We might have played this. What am I gonna do? Not play it though? Come on. Oh, we got a charge shot? All right. Oh, she feels nice. There we go, powering up already. We have a charge shot. We might have a super bomb, I don't know. Yes. Guys, we are powered up, I'm, I hate to tell you. Those bullets are a little difficult to see. Jeez, how much more powered up can we get? Oh yeah, oh we're jamming now. What a nice shooter. Clear out the ground, that's right. They're very important. I think we're fully powered up. Oh, that's what I say when I pull down my pants. Oh! Oh, shit. Shit. Super bomb? We have a super bomb? Oh, what's that? Oh, that's a weapon select. Stage has that piston. Oh yeah. Guys, the music is on. System reminds me of Lord of Thunder, right? What a wonderful time for shooters. Alright, we got our charge shot all the way up. Who's eating it? You're eating it, bitch! Out of here! Out of here! Who's this? Look at these beautiful graphics. Oh, fuck everybody. 
everybody on the screen, you're out of here. zone guys how am I supposed to shut it off we're in the zone oh 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 that was probably more luck than being in the zone guys the show is ordained by God we can't lose oh wow Don't make me laugh. Oh, don't make me laugh. Yeah, you ready for this? Eat it, bitch. I know all the tropes. Oh, shit, except for that one. Oh, come on. Come on. Come on. Anybody with two eyes, we're out of here. Dip, dip. Oh, it's baseball? Jesus Christ. Neo Geo is almost one of those those games consoles that you can almost let the sports games slide, huh? What is this, volleyball? No, we're not doing volleyball. We're not doing volleyball. All right, here we go. Ready? This is it. Beep, boop. We got to close on a high note here, guys. Because let me tell you something. The Neo Geo is hitting on all cylinders today. Sorry. Hate to be the one to tell you. What are we talking about? The year is, is, oh boy. 2002, the king of fighters, oh boy. All right, you don't gotta tell me, buddy. Oh my God, look at this selection. Oh no, quick, 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 who's this guy? Oh no, this guy. Who am I fighting? I don't know, I don't care. All right, let's go. All right, let's rock and roll. I don't have time for this. That's it. Machine gun hands! Wow! Oh god, I want to hit him with that so bad. There you go, bitch. Jeez. Can you feel those impacts through the screen? here bitch just like that <laughs> oh machine gun Kelly game is really good. I know what you're gonna do with that fucking... Oh! Oh, take that kick right in your nutsack, asshole. Jeez. Motherfuck. God, I can't... This guy's good! Fuck! Okay, here we go. 
We're not pull Oh, whoa, come on. That's an all you can. This game is beautiful. Oh, bitch, right in your face. Get out of here. Okay, come here, bitch. Are you ready? Yeah, are you ready, honey? Look at those dads. Ow! Whoa! No, oh, Jesus! No! No! Oh, yes! Oh, shit! You see them tits? What the fuck is going on here? Get out of here. God damn it. Guys. Do you realize you just tuned into the greatest video game program in the history of human civilization? And you better believe that. With the 4K face! We'll see you next time. Guys, we got a show happening on Patreon. It can only be done off... Off... Off grid! This is my email address. You have majorly problems write me put advices in the header and we're going to give you wonderful advices just like this in fact i started sleeping with my wife's brother <laughs> no this can't be <laughs> ah jimmy that can fuck me all night long unlike my husband how what you want a girl in the wnba i'm throwing up i wouldn't go to a game i don't know i would throw eggs onto the onto the court while she was playing She'd be like, Dad, why? Shut up. Drink a lot of water. Ah, oh, God, this is depressing. Okay, just get your fat tits already. Get your fat tits. I mean, what's that? You want to carry around a piece of uranium in your pocket? Hey, break that sucker in half. Give me some. I'm with you guys, and that's what's important to understand. If you have problems, and I could see right now, I'm looking in your living room. Right now. Sheesh. What the hell is going... I mean, come on. Guy, you ever hear of, uh, I don't know, Pledge? Spray a little on that coffee table, will you? Guys, it's okay to have problems. We all have problems. Share them with me. I will help you solve them just like... All right, Patreons. You know, I want to tell you with YouTube basically bending me over and pile driving me by demonetizing my videos because I say because I say uh, I say things naughty language that's right naughty language I should be punished so I get demonetized so that's why you know I am so grateful to all the Patreons because you guys really are the engine that keeps this machine running thank you guys we'll see you next time